What's up guys, Weather Wednesday, coming at you with another Raid Shadow Legends video. And today, we are nearing the end of the Incarnate Fusion. As you can see, I have all four epics ready to fuse. One, two, three, four, all level 50. And if you're not there, you should be winding this up very soon. But wait, do not fuse Incarnate yet. Because tomorrow we have clan versus clan tournament coming up. So today I want to talk about how to maximize your points for clan versus clan. Whatever level you are at, whatever resources you have available, I want to show you how to use them for clan versus clan. This is a personal rewards tournament, so it is the most important clan versus clan. And that's what I am always saving my resources for. And a gold shard and more voids, more blues, plus some crit damage gloves or uh, artifacts. And even if you're on tier one, you can get some extra goodies if your clan ends up winning and you get enough points to qualify. But how do you get the points to qualify besides making sure that your clan wins well it all comes down to these objectives and i want to talk about what the best objectives are and how to get the most points necessary now we don't know what the bonus objectives will be yet we'll find that out tomorrow but there's always uh about three of these objectives will earn you two times the normal points with a cap that will limit how many points you can double down on but it doesn't matter those are only bonuses but there are still uh, certain ways within the game to get the best points now the first way i can't do anymore unfortunately but if you wait to upgrade your great hall you get incredible points from just saving those up every month and using them during personal cvc i have maxed out my great hall so I can no longer upgrade any affinity bonuses and I can no longer get points that way. Somebody did point this out last time and it's just something I had kind of let slip my mind because I can't get those points anymore. Now, next, as I said, if you have the incarnate fusion done, wait for the fusion because you will get great points for summoning champions. Uh, for a brand new legendary that you have never summoned before, you can get 30,000 points. For a legendary that you have summoned before, I think you get 10,000, something like that. Uh, you can, if you're also super patient and you didn't summon these over the weekend for the summon rush, you could also get some points for epics, but not nearly as many. Now, personally, I will be summoning my Mikage fusion tomorrow i just pulled tatsu in a video last week i hope that you watched it it was one of the most exciting pulls i've ever had in the game considering it was for a legendary that i do not care about other than she's part of the fusion so i've got all of my ducks in a row i've got my epics at 50 i got my legendaries at 60 and i will be pulling my first ever mythical champion but it doesn't stop there what can you do with those brand new champions well if you have been saving wisely you will have books i always book my champions during cbc now lady mikage i looked up it looks like she only needs 10 books unless i misread that so i should be able to fully book my lady mikage and I also have 18 legendary books. Uh, I've been able to save more legendary books over the last few months than I used to be able to. It used to range in like the 12 to 15 range, but for some reason I've been getting closer to this number, 18, lately. Perhaps I've been going deeper into tournaments than I used to. So I have a couple legendaries that I want to book up. I want to get uh, Varl the Destroyer done. I want to get Genzin done. And then I have another choice. I might put some books into Blade Master. I'm not so sure about that yet. And then Epics. I've got 40 books. People that complain about Epics that need a lot of books. Listen, 
I get more epic books than I know what to do with just by playing the game. And I'm just starting to pump them into epics that I don't even use. I started building epics that I got from the Doom Tower, like Taya and LaBerga and Z and Gwyneth, all pretty useless champions as far as I know, but you just never know and you can never get them again other than getting them through the Doom Tower. So I'm building them up and making sure that I keep them. I don't accidentally feed them or anything. And so I'm going to put books into them because quite frankly, I have the epics that I need built up. So I am just using epic books wherever I can. Same thing goes with rare books. Once you get, you know, past the early game, you're not building a whole lot of rare champions other than like something rare where you're trying to cheese some content. But, you know, once you get your Cold Hearts booked up, uh, maybe your Renegades, a few other champions that are somewhat useful. I don't really have a place for rare books. Technically, I could just feed them into a random rare just to get points. I, I usually like to at least save some just for the rare occasion that I might want to uh, build some random rare for some random cheese content, maybe for Curse City. Obviously, you know, you can summon shards. I don't recommend summoning shards for CVC unless you're a Kraken and you can afford the extra shards. I pretty much save my shards for fusion summons or for two times summons or for if you're close to mercy and they pull out a pull one legendary, get a second legendary free. The one plus one summons are great also. So unless you're a Kraken, I wouldn't summon tomorrow and if you are a kraken you just don't care but the next big thing that i get points for is i save up all of my forge materials for personal cvc my main thing that i'm focusing on this time is i'm trying to get all the lethal gear i can from the dark fey from the doom tower and then i also always put in a lot of effort into perception so as you can see, I've got a lot of perception gear. Looks like I can pull 206 pieces as of right now. And I've got a big mission right now. I am near nearing the end of the second of three parts toward the horse, Marius the Gallant. And I need to craft two rank six mythical artifacts in the forge. So I had to save all these mythical charms and I'm hoping that 217 will get me at least two rank six mythical pieces. If not, I will have a very bad day tomorrow. So those are the big, big ways uh, that I get points. But how else can you get points? Well, you do get some pretty decent points. If you have a lot of silver, you can get some good points just from upgrading artifacts. So if you level it up to say 16, you get some pretty good points from that. You can also get good points from Ascension. I try to save as much of my Ascension as I can for this uh, time period for personal CVC because you can get some really good points. But again, you need a lot of silver. And that again is where the forge comes from. Because most of the stuff that you get from the forge, you are going to sell and you're going to get a good amount of silver. I probably get 20 to 30 million silver overall from using the forge. And then I use most of that on leveling gear and ascending gear. And you can also, or I said ascending, I meant enchanting. You can enchant gear, but you can also get points for ascending gear. So this is a great time as well to search through all of your gear. If you happen to have a lot of oils or extracts, it's a great time to ascend your gear and get a lot of points for that. Now, if we look back at this and we see that there are objectives, uh, I talked a lot about the champion objectives, getting champions, upgrading champions, upgrading their skills you can get you can get points for getting perfect souls. Uh, campaign, it's not a great time to run campaign. 
unless you got nothing else to do but build champions especially if you're early game then you can get some points but they're not great potion keep is terrible i don't even run potion keep anymore because i get pretty much everything i need from curse city or doom tower or whatever it's not the best time to run minotaur if you can avoid it i i might be running minotaur i might wait until thursday to get my lady mikage uh run through minotaur but I, what i will probably do is see if we are going to uh, have a good chance of winning cvc and then i might use the reward energy toward uh toward the minotaur that's what i often do and then you got your dungeons and usually at least one of these will have double points but overall spider is typically the time to do or the uh best dungeon to do because it's pretty easy overall to get through stage 10 of the spider's den compared to the other uh dungeons and you can get the most points from that but you can also get points from sand devil has been nerfed phantom shogun's grove has been nerfed so it might be a good time to get those oils and extracts going uh save your iron twins runs don't run them on monday run them on tuesday and wednesday and then faction wars save your faction wars runs for cvc arena doesn't give a ton of points but tech team arena does a little bit more uh you will get some points from collecting your demon lord objective or chests and then like i said upgrading your gear forging your gear for some reason they give one point for every gem used that's basically nothing and so that is where you get your points however this week they just started a brand new tournament that is up for your consideration and so as you can see you can get prism shards for a very special sort of special altar of souls event where you can go to the summon pole and you could possibly win a soul stone from one of these great champions and there are in fact great champions that you could get a two to star two to six star soul for. Now, unfortunately, you're very, very likely to get an epic. 72% chance of getting an epic. And a nearly 50% chance that it's going to be a two star. So that means that it's about about one in three of you will get a two star epic soul, which is nearly worthless like not totally worthless but is it really worth the energy necessary to run fire knight and my answer is only if you have nothing else to do in the game now personally today i'm going to go soft on the fire knight tournament just to see what happens tomorrow see if i need to put my energy towards something else or not now I did make a Fire Knight team that made of epics that can run stage 20 in about two minutes, maybe a little bit less. And I just threw in Seer, Dark Kale, uh, Ferric and the Fat, Allure, and Stag Knight. Now I'm not going to show you this run because it takes two minutes. It's very typical Fire Knight run. Uh, it didn't look like it was in any danger of failing. It's only stage 20, but I will recommend, uh, I watched a video by Tairaku who made uh, several very similar teams and he goes way in more depth than I will here. But there are plenty of options. You know, if you have a developed account and you want to take on the Fire Knight, you have plenty of energy that you can go ahead and blow toward this. I'm not gonna go like super incredibly hard on it. It kind of depends somewhat on what's going to be available in the clan shop tomorrow. This resets in half a day and maybe there will be energy in here. I could use energy from there and I could use energy from uh, from the 
rewards that you get from like my clan will probably be tier two tier three we get a little bit of energy from there uh, you know you can pull energy from here and there and you know it's gonna cost close to 2500 energy uh just running from the fire knight so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna save uh i got 200 energy here i will save the energy available from my advanced quests and i'll see if i feel like running fire knight over the next couple days but i'm not gonna go super hard on it uh these rewards not yeah these rewards in the summon pool here they are very tempting but you'll probably get a two-star epic just being honest with you if you don't get a two-star epic you'll get a three-star epic or a two-star legendary probably uh, if you do the quick math you only have a 28 percent chance of getting a legendary and if you do hit that it's only 5.5 percent chance of getting a six star that's probably not going to happen that adds up to about one percent quick math not not exactly let's see one out of 20 a little over one percent and so about three percent of you would get a five or six star legendary those are pretty low odds but that's kind of where this game is at so i might do it just because it will get points uh if you happen to be able to get double points double objective points for fire night tomorrow that would make it even easier so there are options but otherwise i would just put your focus on making sure that if you did the fusion you know save it for tomorrow and just do the other things that i advise you to do to get your points and you can make a decision for your account if you feel like doing the fire night or not i'm kind of a maybe but the more i talk about it the more i think that i could probably do it pretty easily so we'll see and like i said use your forge fuse your champion do your great hall save up your books if you didn't save them this time save them next time great great way to get really easy points so that's it for today and uh good luck with your cvc tomorrow thanks so much for watching uh thanks to all my new subscribers if you look at this number above my head i am at 333 that is approximately one third of the way toward my goal of getting to a thousand subs and i'd appreciate your help in getting that number even closer so thanks so much for watching i'm wilder wednesday and i'll check you out in the next raid shadow legends video see ya